Yesterday's price is not today's price. Standing on business. Standing on business. Mm -hmm. Standing on business. Did he say, I'm a post my cash <laughs> chat? Then I want you to send some money and I'm a top shit. Eh, 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 eh. Top shit. No, I'm a top shit. My, I'm a quit yep. my job and then I'm gonna blame somebody else. Yup. For me quit. Oh, I got two hundred dollars in my cash app. I ain't gonna cash it out. I'm gonna send it in this direction. I need it tomorrow to pay my rent. Uh, 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 Cause I'm late. I'm late. I'm late on my rent. Now I got late fees. Bitch got late fees. What's up, Brownies? I'm doing a standing on business follow up to the first one that I did about Quentin Latham, aka Funky Dineva, and his departure from Fox Soul and TGIF. And the reason I'm doing that is because there has been a lot of beef going on behind the scenes after the fact. It has been flat out the battle of the bunions, honey. The battle of the bad feet girls. The girls are fighting. And I really think that it's sad and it's a shame but the blame is to be placed on both sides. Now, that's the only clip that I have and it's the only clip that I'm posting where I usually love to pull all the receipts and put them in a video. I have a chronic illness. I've had flare-ups for every day of the new year and I have to make the most of my time where I'm feeling okay before the pain meds wear off. I posted that clip because it's one that I've already posted last week on TikTok and I didn't have to go researching for. However, comma, you can go and search by these key terms and definitely find on YouTube or TikTok the proof of everything that I'm saying actually did happen. The importance of the clip that I did play, though, is that a lot of people are saying, Claudia is completely blameless in this. I haven't heard her say anything. See, this is another instance of splitting hairs. Let me be clear. Claudia Jordan picked up her personal cell phone and opened up her personal IG account, and she went live in her house with her friends, who she apparently has been talking about him and his money and his finances behind his back because how else would they know? And then she sat and recorded and laughed as they made up statements and jokes and even songs about him and the state of his finances and made fun of him. If that's not being complicit, I don't know what is. So saying, well, she technically didn't say it herself. That's a technicality that you all can stand on if that's the way that you operate with your friends. But I do remember years ago when T.S. Madison and Kaya was doing the Queen's Court and Kaya would do these things talking about Q. Q called Maddie and stated his perspective on that. Like, Maddie, I'm your real friend. We go way back and you are letting somebody that you're working with or making money with dog me on your platform at your house. And that's not cool if we're real friends. To which she said, well, you know, I can't tell her what she can and cannot say. And they had a bit of a falling out for a, a stretch of time because they didn't see eye to eye on that situation. Point being, with another member of the LGBTQ community, he has fallen out about this exact same thing. So he's keeping that same energy. This is what I have to say about this tit for tat and back and forth. Claudia is doing a post and delete, which is why you can't catch a lot of her things. But in particular for me, two things. She purposefully brought Flame Monroe on that show to sit in as his replacement. That was personal. That was a dig. It was intentional. There's no need in playing with people's intelligence like it wasn't. Let's move on. And then secondly... For her to go on Conscious TV and for him to ask, um, in the spirit of forgiveness and moving on, are there any other people that you had beef with that you would kind of like move on and bury the hatchet with? For Michelle Brown, of every name in the world, to be one of the ones that you pulled out of your hat, if people know that history and you say that that was not intentional and a dig, now you're just insane. And yes, all of these big digs came after the initial shallow digs, like with Taraji and all of that, whereas Q said, listen, now it's over with. I don't work there no more. Y'all leave me alone. And Claudia did keep going. But that's real easy for you to say now when if we really want to be technical, it was actually Q who drew first blood. And I'm going to tell you why. These were your real friends outside the show. And according to Claudia, she was the one that got you on the show. She swears that the execs at the network had never even heard of you, which 
I don't know how, when you consider the totality of his resume. If y'all were real friends outside of the show and before the show, for you to quit and then for them to hear about it after the fact and for y'all to be real friends and for you to think that that wasn't going to hurt their feelings or they weren't going to feel some type of way, you are absolutely insane. From a business standpoint, you didn't owe them anything. From a friendship standpoint, you absolutely did. And you did it that way because like me, you suffer from anxiety and depression and you knew had you told them beforehand, they were going to try to peer pressure and guilt trip you into staying and it was going to trigger you. I get it, but still, they are human beings with feeling. Now, was Claudia petty to keep it going after that? Sure, but you matched her tit for tat, so your hands aren't clean. Does she have a different responsibility than you have, though, because she's still an employee, whereas you're a free agent? Yes. So the post and delete, I kind of understand it there. Doesn't make it right. I'm just saying I understand it. Y'all have to move differently. And in the realm of standing on business, I'm going to wrap this part up by saying this. It was a diabolical genius move for Q to decide to go live at the exact same time that TGIF was live streaming to prove the fact that he could get more views and more engagement as an individual on his own platform than you all could as an ensemble cast. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. So I'm not mad at that because it's business, it's a strategy. But I am curious for all of the people who swear that Funky Dineva is anti-black woman, if you are still supporting Fox Soul, how do you feel about the black womanhood representation on that network? Because biracial Claudia has had multiple shows at one time on that network, and that's fine. But if they were the fubu of networks like they claim, why do you not see more regular standard issue black women on that network like Quad, who should have been a natural replacement for Funky Dineva? So my question is, how many regular standard issue black women, darker than a paper bag, non-immigrant, non-LGBTQ, and not partner non-black do you see on that network? At some point in time, we are going to have to have the uncomfortable conversation about the black tax and the cost of being regular black in this country and how it is perceived as being unpalatable or unprofitable and thus it is rarely ever chosen to be at the forefront or spearhead something, period. And that's if it's chosen at all for anything in this country. In its regular form, American blackness is two black parents, four black grandparents. When you trace American blackness back, its lineage, it will be traced back to, and you know you can't say real words or they'll demonetize it or the algorithm won't promote it. It can be traced back to that group of chattel that built this country for free and has been paying the black tax for the entirety of its existence in this country. Anything else other than that, regular black with the lineage attached to it, you are going to have a different lived experience in this country because you didn't have to pay the entirety of the punishment from the very beginning, generationally, right? We're talking about lineage, not talking about what is perceived black based on looks. On top of that, all you have to do to move yourself closer to the front of the line, if you're black and you need to be chosen for a position, here are the things that you can do. First and foremost, if you are black light, black mixed, black and, black plus, black barely, black halfway, any of those things, that's going to push you to the front. Because whether people want to admit it or not, colorism is a real thing. Then from there, if you can bring in another checked box with you, you're going to have to be black immigrant, partnered non-black, or if you can be black and LGBTQ too, that's definitely going to move you to the front of the line. It's black voices talking about black topics that affect the black community. At least a fourth of your network should be able to be regular black women, meaning you shouldn't have to be immigrant born, you shouldn't have to be LGBTQ, you shouldn't have to be partnered non-black, meaning blackness in a state that creates more blackness from blackness. That shouldn't be that difficult. It should actually be a default setting. But what I want you to do is go look at the Fox Soul lineup of all of their different shows and tell me the name of the one that is led 
spearheaded or it's your own show by an American born black woman that is darker than a paper bag that is non-immigrant, non-LGBTQ and not partnered non-black. At best, you'll be able to find one of these people as a part of an ensemble cast. Now, I've often said it seems to me that people would rather support a black man in a wig and nails and lipstick cosplaying as a black woman while playing up every negative stereotype of black womanhood than you would support a regular standard issue black woman, right? Playing herself, but just not doing the terrible representation. So for those of you who would give pushback on that, I want you to go and check out those men, not saying that I hate them or anything. I'm just simply making a point and stating facts. Look at how large their following is compared to your regular standard issue black woman. And then also, I want you to consider the fact that more often than not in the news, when you see these um, images or you hear these stories about somebody that is a part of the authorities, when they go to handcuffing and manhandling um, and injuring in the process, these young black girls, tell me what they look like most often. Do they look like the biracial representation that we have? Do they look like the women that you see, not just on Fox Soul, not even singling them out. This is the media in general. You don't see regular standard issue black women represented in a positive light. And thus, when you see one being disrespected in the news, what do they look like? What are they a reflection of? Furthermore, when you see these images, you'll also notice nine times out of 10, nobody is coming to their rescue. No one's coming to their aid. They're devalued. And if I'm just reaching and you know, folks love to, to act like colorism isn't real. This is global. It applies to every ethnicity, nationality, whatever. But when a black person mentions this to the black community, that your anti-blackness is actually so internalized that it's a default setting and you don't even realize that you're this way. It's a part of your programming. You all get to pulling insults out of the air. Oh no, you're just probably ugly or you're just probably child, whatever. My, my elevator didn't go down to that floor. Listen, it's a real thing. It has been studied. It has been proven. The doll test has been running for decades now. And I want you to ask yourself, why is it and how is it that you can sit a group full of children between the ages of like three and seven who aren't being taught these things at home? And every time they're asked to choose, you know, which which little girl is bad, which little girl is dumb, it'll be the darkest in the bunch, even if it is the darkest girl in the bunch that's being asked the question. It'll be the one that's a reflection of herself that is being otherized or pegged as less than or unfit or bad or unwanted. Representation absolutely matters. When you see that there's very little of it in a positive light for regular, unambiguous black women, darker than a paper bag, in relationships that will create more little replicas of themselves is what I'm getting at. Notice how every time one of these stories go viral, about a little girl crying and saying that she's ugly. What does that little girl look like? So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the tests that's been done over the years and see the results. So show me the smart child. Okay, why is she the smart child? Because she looks like me. Okay, show me the mean child. Okay, why is she the mean child? Because she's way darker. Show me the good child. Why is she the good child? Because I think she looks like me. Show me the bad child. Why is she the bad child? Because she's a lot darker. Show me the ugly child. Why is she the ugly child? Because she's like, um, a lot darker. What do you think? I mean, everything she said, she chose someone like her because she's smart. And she is. Um, All the good attributes. She's yeah. got a healthy ego. <laughs> that looks and like me. Smart. That gets like me. I just think it's because she's not exposed. I just think it's because she's not exposed. Which doll is the black doll? This one. And which one is the white doll? That one. Which doll is the pretty doll? Which doll is the nice doll? 
Which doll is the bad doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? And why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and he has two eyes. Which doll is the ugly doll? Why is that doll ugly? Because he, because he's black. Which doll looks most like you? Like me? Yeah, which one looks like you? And that one. So I want you to look at how small these children are. But not only that, that the white child has the same mentality about that dark skin as the black children do. And furthermore, if this is already embedded in your brain at this small of an age, that to have darker skin means to be less than in a multitude of ways, at what point do you think that goes away? So what do you think is the best way to get rid of some of these notions? My answer is to give them positive examples to the contrary. Now you can find many examples of dark men on the Foxhole Network, but think about this. If both black boys and girls are taught to find darker hues repulsive, how long does it take before this leads to your erasure? Falling away, so you 